Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. I hope you lot are all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is an interesting one. If I do say so myself, I'm looking forward to when football starts again. <laughs> Feels like a distant time, doesn't it? But let's say next season, if indeed that does start, as we assume it will. This video is looking at Chelsea's lineup for next season, possible starting 11 and formation. I'm speculating and also I want to offer the disclaimer at this point that this is of course subjective. I'm not saying this is absolutely Chelsea's strongest lineup next season and you should all believe and well, believe me, agree with me. No, I'm saying this is what I think and then I'll shout out to you guys or what do you think? So, you know. <laughs> We all know a couple of names that is going to be in there, but I'm maybe going to surprise a few people. Who knows? I'm excited to get into it, but before we do get into it, I want to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by OneFootball. Yes, indeed. My sponsor, OneFootball, is the one-stop place for all things football. And to be honest, in a time where you can't even watch football, this is when perhaps you need the OneFootball app most. It keeps you updated with all new stories, whether that be what's going on with UEFA and the postponing of the Premier League, but generally it offers fixtures, results, statistics, news, media, what about world football, or indeed just Chelsea, you can refine it to that. So it's an excellent app, check it out, click the link in the top of the description, forgetting how to talk again. And go check it out, of course, maybe watch the video first. All right, let's get into it. So, Frank Lampard's Chelsea, Academy Fueled. If you haven't seen my video I've done about the value of the Chelsea squad and the Frank Lampard, I suggest you go check that out because it's super interesting and it might surprise a few of you. But still, Lampard is yet to make signings. Sure, Chelsea have agreed the transfer of Hakim Ziyech and that will happen. And there's a couple of more that are probably in the pipeline. But you imagine when everyone's back from injury, a couple of signings in, Chelsea's starting eleven will look very different next season and Chelsea Football Club will indeed be a completely different proposition. So in this lineup it's going to be a 4-3-3, I'm going to go through each player and I'm going to give you a special mention or an alternative for some positions, not all. Right so let's start with the man between the sticks now, obviously Chelsea are heavily 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 linked to a new goalkeeper whether that be Dean Henderson, Nick Pope, Andre or Nana, etc. I'm going to go with Kepa Aretha Balaga. Purely because I do think Chelsea might, well, almost certainly will sign a new goalkeeper, but I think it will be like a high-class second-choice goalkeeper that can challenge Kepa if they need to. I feel like Chelsea don't want to make a gargantuan loss on flogging Kepa this summer because they will make a massive loss. So I think they'll keep the faith. Um, his last couple of appearances was good for Chelsea. So I'm going to say Kepa in goal, and maybe there'll be a new number two that can challenge him if Kepa's form drops. Now, although Chelsea have been linked with centre-backs, I'm not actually going to change the centre-backs for this lineup. I'm going to put in Andreas Christensen and Antonio Rudiger as the starting centre-back partnership. I think Frank Lampard does really, really like Christensen, and as the season progressed before it stopped this year, this season, he tended to favour Christensen more and more. And although Rudiger had dropped form and had a, you know, a few poor games, he has also demonstrated throughout his Chelsea tenure that he can be very good. Now, I did want to put Tamori in over Rudiger, but I had a little bit of self-reflection and I thought, you know what, have some sort of senior centre-back in there and if Chelsea are going to invest money elsewhere across the pitch, Rudiger and Christensen are going to be my centre-backs. Obviously, a right back is an easy one and there's going to be no alternative here. It's going to be superstar Rhys James, who for me will only get better and better in this Chelsea side. Dynamic, strong, fast and offensive and Frank Lampard wants to utilise his fullbacks as as offensively as possible. I think we can all agree on this one. Reese James is the starting right back next season. First exciting one of the lineup. Left back, I'm putting in Alex Tellez. Chelsea want a new left back. Sure, Marcus Alonso served Frank Lampard well, but Frank Lampard is very lucid to Marcus Alonso's weaknesses and frailties indeed. He knows he's good going forward. Chelsea want a dynamic fullback with a good engine on the left hand side. 
Chelsea are currently negotiating with Porto for Alex Tellers. The deal is moving along, although there's apparently stumbling blocks in relation to fees, but I believe Alex Tellers will be a Chelsea player next season, and therefore he will be Chelsea's starting left back. Right, the midfield, the midfield three. At the base of this midfield, I am putting Mateo Kovacic. Now, this is the defensive midfield spot, and Mateo Kovacic has moved into this spot this previous season. Season just gone, season paused. He's played very well there. Arguably still Chelsea's player of the season. He's shown that he can play very, very well in that area and all switch around of other midfielders. For me, I do love Jorginho, but for how I want to, what players I want to put into this midfield, it has to be Mateo Kovacic in that spot for me. Now, Mateo Kovacic is going to be flanked by two number eights. I haven't picked N'Golo Kante in this instance because of his short amount of playing time this season and perhaps poor form in times when he's on the pitch. I've gone for Ruben Loftus-Cheek firstly because I'm a huge fan of his. I think he will massively affect the Chelsea team essentially when he's on the pitch. Going forward he's superb, he's very very strong and he offers a different dynamic in the game essentially so he has to be on the pitch for me. So Ruben Loftus-Cheek goes next to Mateo Kovacic and the other side I am going to go with Mason Mount. We all know he's a favourite of Frank Lampard and we know he can score the odd worldy goal but more importantly for the way Frank Lampard wants to play football it needs to be a high press and there is no better pressing midfielder in the Premier League than Mason Mount. He's still very very young indeed getting better all the time. He already has a lot of senior experience in football whether that be in the Eredivisie whether that be in the championship or whether that be a season in the Premier League so for me he's gonna get better and better he's really highly rated and he's important the way Chelsea play so yeah Mount, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Mateo Kovacic complete my Chelsea midfield all right tasty time on the right wing we have new boy Hakim Ziyech cutting in onto that wicked left foot of his showing Mares he's the new upgrade in the Premier League Ziyech I mean this is a no-brainer really of course he can come in and play in the number 10 when the formation is different but for now we need the absolute different exciting weapon on the wing and that is Hakim Ziyech on the right wing no questions asked and I don't think many people would argue with me at this point which brings me neatly over to the left wing and that is going to be the returning of Captain America Christian Pulisic who enjoyed a lovely spell in the Chelsea first team when fit scoring a perfect hat trick away at Turf Moor who can say they've done that you know can he do on a cold wet and windy night at Stoke doing on a windy day up at Turf Moor against those Burnley boys that is no small feat so yeah Captain America offers something completely different when he dribbles with the ball at his feet he can run in behind he's very different to Hakim Ziyech they can both swap flanks offer interesting dynamics <laughs> Christian Pulisic Captain America is on the left wing. Right, striker. By the way, I wanted to offer, say at this point, I wanted to offer a special mention for Billy Gilmore in the midfield because I think he will go from strength to strength in the Chelsea team. And we've all seen how much of a gargantuan positive effect Billy Gilmore can have on this Chelsea side. So when I put in Mateo Kovacic there, I just wanted to offer that, you know, I'd nearly picked Billy Gilmore, but I just about didn't. So anyway, striker. Tammy Abraham, he's going to go there for me. Now, I know Chelsea are in for a striker and Tammy Abraham's yet to sign a new deal, but he can score goals in the Premier League. He's shown that. Sure, he's wasted a bunch of chances, but he's also been playing through injury. I think when Chelsea do get a new striker, and I genuinely believe Chelsea will get a new striker, he's going to challenge Tammy Abraham, take the pressure off him, so when Tammy does come back in, he's not going to be injured. And the fresh Tammy Abraham starting, he does score goals. That's just always what he's done recently in the last four, few years, really. So I do back Tammy Abraham to keep the number nine shirt and to score goals essentially and whether like Chelsea buy you know Moussa Dembele even Luka Jovic I reckon they'll come in and score goals but I reckon they're going to be both going out the same same place but I back Tammy Abraham's attitude to just carry on scoring goals and you know you could easily swap this with a Luka Jovic or someone else who Chelsea in negotiations with but because Chelsea are not really far down the line with a striker it'll be difficult for me to just pick a striker there because it would be almost a bit football managery 
where everyone else on the pitch I've picked for a good reason because they're either signed or like Tellez they're far down the road or Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Pulisic they'll come back from injury you dig so I want to get everyone's comments on this your thoughts and opinions are you playing a 4-3-3 like me are you playing a 4-2-3-1 Hell, you playing the 3-4-3 three, three and changing it up completely. I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions, so let me know who you'd switch around in the lineup down in the comment section below, and I'll be reading them. If you've enjoyed the content today, guys, I'd appreciate it if you like the video, because that does help me out a lot. And why not? Why not subscribe if you're new to the channel, man? Hey, just do it. Just subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Remember to stop by Football Therapy every single day because I'm bringing you content daily regardless of the football stopping. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be helping you out. Content. Let's do it. Enjoy the football that's not happening and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby